Today on the Skid Factory, we're fitting this here barra to this here XE Falcon long roof. Can you put in that 2K barra guy from Full Boost? Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Last episode, we went down to John's and we put this engine together. It's full of shiny bits from Golby's, from Calford cams, all the good bits that we need to keep this, hopefully keep it together at, I don't know, 700 and something horsepower, we're guessing. That's this is Wayne, he owns it. He oh, paid for it yeah, all, right. so he's pretty keen to see what happens as well. Bloody we're pretty much ready to drop it in there. We've got tough mounts to hold it into the car. Pretty much a bolt-in fit. These just sit on the original pads that used to be engine mounts on the cross member. Uh, it also comes with a sway bar. Well, you can option it with a sway bar yep. that, that clears the front of the engine. So we've got that as well. That'll go on after we put the engine in. We've got a bunch of other shiny bits that have been uh, tempting Wayne in his, under his bed, I suppose. I don't know, in your garage <laughs> somewhere. Under his bed sounds in his, um, in his man cave. One of them is this inlet manifold, which um, we are pretty much prototyping on this car. Um, our mate Denny has done the craftsmanship behind it. This is the first car that it's gone on to. Wayne's, um, Wayne's mate Ryan is a powder coater, so everything's powder coated. Big thanks to Ryan. That's what you do. So um, we've got that. We've got a six boost manifold from Golby's as well and a GDX 3584RS to go on the other side, so um, should do the job. Just bolt it in. He's a bit keen. Yeah. Very keen. Righto. Once it's bolted in, it's, that's it for us. We're that's out. It. You can finish it off. Righto. <laughs> right, it'll swing back when we go down. It was faster on the BMX back in the day. Mate, without a doubt. Is that true, Alan? Well, it's pretty, it's, obviously he's gonna be faster when he's not like in a pile on the ground with skin off him and shit like I always was. Yeah, I was a little accident prone on a pushy. <laughs> <laughs> always go home I think, with a I think I'm a better on. motorbike rider than I was no, I BMX rider. <laughs> <laughs> All good fun. But I think your worst accident was on the skateboard when you broke your jaw. No, that was on a push bike as well. Huh? Was it? Yeah. Come off your skate. No. Is that why you're so ugly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could be one of the reasons. Normally at about this time we'd be uh, chocking up the engine with chunks of wood and dangling things around the place and then spending a couple of episodes swearing at engine mount production but this isn't a uh, unusual conversion by by our standards so um, you can actually buy all the gear so uh, tough mounts engine mounts you just drops it in put some bolts in and off you go uh, it sits it in the right place and uh, you know relatively correct for the car because they've done it already for us catches with this we were obviously using a Nissan gearbox, which is probably not, <laughs> I doubt anyone's done that before, but we already had the box and it's already modified um, for manual shifting and that sort of thing. So um, we may need to fiddle around with the this. I've already adapted this transmission to sit a lot further back than the original one um, back when we did the VH41 conversion. So tape measure says it probably won't go too far off being correct so um, that's a win um, we do have a yellow terra flex plate here um, basically these things like to flex plates like to fall off the back of the engine so um, a bigger thicker flex plate is always a good idea the original ones are just 
paper thin and don't really like much power and they don't even like their standard power so um, that's going on um, I just sent Wayne into town to get some um, high tensile bolts to bolt it on with because the original bolts aren't really long enough because of the, the gauge difference in the steel this is the trans um, RE4 R03A uh, same as what a patrol's got in it obviously with the transfer case in the back of it these things are widely used in Nissan and uh, and other vehicles um, probably Z32 300 ZX would probably be the, the what most people would have known them to be in but they're also in anything that's a high torque application uh, from Nissan so obviously patrols um, and the, all the V8s had that box behind them all the big all the good V8s and not, obviously not the uh, Y44 no offense Mark um, so what we've got here is a bell housing that adapts it to the barra and the reason why this is available is because a lot of people put barras in patrols so We've got that bell housing and we've got a converter made, custom made by TCE in Melbourne. Um, it's tiny so I expect it will be fairly um, slippy but you never know. We'll find out when it's in there. So the problem that we had with this thing is that um, the V8s have a really big bell housing and because they have a massive torque converter in them which smooths everything out. They're, they're a luxury car. so. The actual um, stator and input shaft on the V8 boxes is, is longer than the others. So what we did was um, get a hold of a broken patrol box from our mate Trav, who um, managed to kill it with a TD-42, which is no mean feat. Must be a tough TD-42. No, actually, my mate Kit came over and helped me change it, everything over because he's a gearbox guy, and uh, he said it looked like it had been full of water, which pretty much sounds along the lines of Trav's antics with his old GQ he probably tipped it over into a ditch at some point and and um, kept on trucking once they pulled him out so we pulled all the guts out of this and swapped it all over changed the pump um, kit went through it and made sure everything was in good nick and we also replaced the band uh, which we got from JD Automatics in Brisbane um, the band being worn out isn't a good sign it probably means the rest of the gearbox is probably a bit worn out as well, but at this stage we're just going to throw it in and send it and see what happens. Uh, can easily come out later and get a rebuild. These boxes are pretty good. They um, Some people refer to them as the Japanese 4L80, so um, they can be built very strong and you can even put trans brakes and that sort of thing in them. So that's why we kept it. it saves us going to a whole new gearbox, etc. So once we get these bolts, we will put the flex plate on and throw the box in behind it see what we're up against as far as the alignment of the box goes if it's right that means we don't need a tail shaft so that's obviously a bonus so fingers crossed We made a heap of progress on the old wagon long roof. Yeah, bueno. the old long roof. Hopefully, we'll be back on the road sometime <laughs> whenever I get my ass into gear. It's actually been probably a good 12 months now. Well, since we started this. Yeah, yeah, since it was off the road, it's been 12 months. Yeah, okay. probably, uh, probably only six months. It's probably been but two or three months since we've actually done any work on work this. On it, so, yeah. other thing that's happened is we've mounted up the radio in the front here. So, this is actually a FG Falcon radio at the front. Yeah, smash kit for the road. And we've got a Mishimoto uh, intercooler from Golby's. That is a 600 by, I forget the dimensions, by 300 by 100, I believe. So a big thick core down the bottom. That's why this blue front bar is on the front here because 
Wayne's been cutting out just the bottom. You're too scared just, to cut up the gold well, one. Well, I'm not cutting up the original one, so that's just the dummy one, and then we can get something maybe fiberglassed up. That's it, that's it. This and one's not going to be a dead sleeper. It's going to be pretty obvious what's in this one, yeah. so. So that, that whole radiator is a, a crash pack, so there's a condenser in behind there too for aircon, which we've got, we are putting aircon in it. Um, the inlet manifold has changed. Wayne had a blue one which came forward. We, we changed that because it was going to... Something to do with plumbing. It was going to clash. The intercool yeah. piping was going to clash on the front here with radiator stuff. So this is a... When we, learned, we learned this when we did the Bedford. That's off an ED Falcon or EB I think it is. EB. So forward facing. Um, we had to modify this slightly because this, this manifold is the one needs to suit a BA. We do actually make these. If you would like to get one yourselves, our mate Danny has cast them himself. He's got, yeah, there we go. So, so that's your other one, which come out through the front. Man, black looks so much better than blue. So this is to suit the early series of XE and also EB and stuff too, is it? Yeah, yep. I believe so, mate. And yeah, then the one, of this, not there. The other one is to suit a BA, which we have modified again, just for this purely, this application. So now we're moving on to exhaust and turbo. So. We've got a GTX, GTX 3582RS going on, and we've got that is being bolted to a six, six boost Ooh. manifold, which came from Golby's. Um, the six boost manifolds give you the option to have the wastegate do, do, do your own thing. So we've got ourselves a Go Fast Bits EX50 wastegate here, which we are going to be mounting down the bottom. I've already got it marked on there. That's going to go down there. Gives us an option to plumb the uh, screamer back to atmosphere and lots of room for a dump pipe to go down there too. So Wayne's now going to pull that manifold off. I'm going to hand him the TIG. Do you know how to TIG weld? Yeah, you do. I think I'm about to learn if I don't. <laughs> we'll weld this all up and then we can continue on with more plumbing and everything else. This has been a little while. Wayne's been... Yeah, it's no hurry. Wayne's been coming to clean the shed a lot, so that's a good thing. Yeah, blisters from all the broom work. <laughs> awesome. So get the manifold off. Well, the steam pop on there. I forget what size it is. Alan will tell you. And continue on. Keep continue on. Yeah, yeah. Right, all. Got a lot to live up to here with these six boost welds. You can tell me I've got too much heat in there, don't you? I can see that. It's actually pretty good, man. It's not as good as a six boost guy, but. Nah, six boost guy is. Pretty like... sure six boost guy does this all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> me? Maybe once every couple of months. We've got the manifold bolted back on, turbo's in place uh, at the right angle for the application, so we're going to move on to the exhaust now. Uh, we just got to clear the. Um, EX50 wastegate, so you sort of got to put a bit of a stack of bits and pieces there. We might still have to shorten this back a bit. We're just working on it at the moment. Why no, why no pie cuts, Alan? Because pie cuts are stupid. Uh, we've just got a, a box of mandrel bends there uh, that we're just chopping up and some straight. It's going to be really simple. It's three and a half inch. You probably could squeeze four out of there, but this turbo doesn't need four inch in my opinion, so we're going three and a half. Uh, we've got a three and a half inch cat and a three and a half inch muffler. Um, it will sound like a barra because it is a barra. So no. there's no it, it, there's no need to do anything fancy. <laughs> Yeah, my V-band's nowhere near a line. 
Don't make your problems my problem. This is going to be so loud, dude. Yeah. I know a guy that likes loud stuff. His name is Wayne. How good's that exhaust stand, though? It's good. Didn't we get this off old cop? I think we did. If you've got a HQ disc... I, mean, I think it got... didn't have any insides in it though, because I made that bit. Do you reckon that's HQ or not? What do you reckon? No. I like how it's worn out. <laughs> from rolling around. It's probably bloody 40 years old. Alright, we've whipped up the uh, exhaust system. It's a 304 stainless, 3.5 inch. Wayne has uh, wrapped the dump pipe with some heat wrapping so it doesn't burn everything in the engine bay. And we've also plumbed the wastegate back to atmosphere here. So that's all good to go. Also got a wide band in there for when we do the wiring later on. That's about all we got for this week in the Barra Build Express. We're getting stuck right into it. We are trying to get this ready for Wayne's birthday, which is in a couple of weeks time. So all hands on deck. We'll have Wayne here every now and then helping us, but uh, otherwise we're just going to rip into it. We'll be back next week to do some more fabrication on some intercooler pipes and whatnot, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Roger. Yeah. Get it. What do you want? The constant expansion of Roger. It's like the universe. Expanding. Where's the broom? Get the broom. Kill it. <laughs>